My wife, Anne, is very angry with me because I've written 154 love poems to people who are not her. <laughs> God, women. I mean, they're so bloody sensitive. I know, I know. Oh. The point is, Kate, how can I put it right? Well, I suppose the first question is, do you still love Anne? Yes, definitely. I, I, I honestly do. Ignorant, illiterate milkmaid though she be. <laughs> it's just that... After 13 years, I'd, I'd really like to lie with someone else. Well, duh! <laughs> I, I'm not going to, I'd, I'd just like to. A lot. <laughs> A really, really lot. <laughs> Poetry helps me deal with these unworthy urges. I, I grab my trusty nib, my wrist starts to fly, and... <laughs> within a few strokes, relief pours out of me. Well... I'm sorry, Mr. Shakespeare, but if ever things are to be right twixt you and Anne again, you're going to have to stop loving whoever it is you're writing these naughty poems to. If only it was so simple, but the fair youth and the dark lady are my twin muses. Tis they who empower my verse. Besides, once the two of them read my sublime and bewitching sonnets, I very much doubt that they'll be able to stop loving me. <laughs> And this by that I prove. Love's fire hits water. Water cools, not low. <laughs> Doesn't rhyme. The sonnets, my lady. See how fervently she reads. How grateful will she be to be the subject of such divine verse. Just reading the one about my eyes being nothing like the sun. Ah, yes, a brilliant opening image, don't you think? The sun being bright, shining, radiant, and above all, hot. Yes, absolutely. But you are saying my eyes are not? Bit of an own goal there, mate. <laughs> well, not as bright, shining, radiant, or hot, obviously. We're talking about the sun, Amelia. <laughs> If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? Done is an English word for grey-brown, no? As when you say, done cow. Out to nil. <laughs> well, yes, but the image is only partially bovine. I'm, I'm not suggesting you have but one bosom with four nipples. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really digging a hole for yourself, aren't you? The breath of my mistress reeks. <laughs> Were you happy with this as well, Mr. Shakespeare? I don't know. Should, should it have been stinks? <laughs> so this is supposed to be flattering, but just so I understand. I get it. Perhaps I should have explained. This love sonnet is particularly brilliant, because besides being a love sonnet, it also satirises love sonnets. You see? You, you, you're getting double bubble. <laughs> This is satirical. Yes, conventionally, love sonnets are ridiculously flattering. They, they make absurdly overblown claims for the beauty of their subject. Well, we wouldn't want that, would we? Exactly. The love I show you in my startlingly innovative 130th sonnet is greater because it recognises your flaws. Next time, bring me sweets. Actually, I've read a poem for you as well. <clears throat> Emilia. Emilia. By God, I'd like to feel you. <laughs> At last, a poem with a proper rhyme. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Shakespeare. Perhaps you'll have better luck with your boyfriend. <laughs> Lord Southampton is a pal. 